For the past month, I replaced my lawnmower with this robot. A robotic lawnmower that cuts my grass every other day, making perfect lines, zero raking, healthier grass, and giving me more free time to do whatever I want. But is this all too good to be true? After four weeks with this mower, there was a lot that I learned. Some things that I was really pleasantly surprised with, and other things that could potentially be a deal breaker for some people. And when I first got this, I had a lot of questions about robot lawnmowers. Like, how long does it take to mow? How does it know where to mow? Does it ever get stuck? How long does the battery last? Does it cut the grass well? Like, what does it do with the grass that it actually cuts? And, and does the lawn look even at the end? Like, even if it goes through little potholes or bumps or things like that. Also, can it mow at night? How loud is it? Uh, is it actually that hands off? And couldn't someone just steal it? So now that I've been using this for the past four weeks, I have answers to pretty much all of those questions and some more. I really had a lot of experience with this mower, and in the end, I was really happy with it. So meet Doug. Doug is my robot lawnmower, and he loves cutting grass. He lives in this little garage right here, and every other day, he'll come out and mow my entire lawn completely automatically. But let's start off with my first question of how does Doug actually know where he is in the lawn? Well, even though I named him Doug, he's actually a Mamotion Luba too. All right, so this is the Mamotion Luba 2. I'll have a link down below, it's an affiliate link, so if you decide to get this at the end of the video and you wanna go through that link, it would help me out a lot. Um, of course, you can buy it in a lot of other places as well, and there are plenty of other robot lawnmowers that can also do similar tasks to what this can do. But this right here, the Luba 2, this has really three ways of knowing what the environment around it is, three ways to detect things. The first thing is this little vision thing on the top. So it has binocular vision, meaning two cameras on the front that can see everything around it. It also has radar, as you can see on the side, to kind of detect the edges of things. It has a bumper on the front. This is the second way it can interact with the world. If it runs into something, a wall or whatever, uh, it detects that, it'll back up, it won't run over like small things and stuff like that. And the third way it knows where it is, is with the RTK station, a little station that you mount on a wall or on a pole or somewhere else that can see outer space and can communicate to this and help it navigate around your lawn. But navigating this, when you first set it up, this does not have a boundary wire. This doesn't have really any difficult installation. Essentially, you just set this on the ground, you mount your little RTK on a wall or something, and then you open your app on your phone and drive it around like an RC car, basically. You drive around the perimeter and there's three things you map. You map the perimeter of the entire space, then you map no-go zones, so if you have like a, a, a tree or any kind of landscaping or something that you don't want it to go in that is within your perimeter, you drive around that and that's a no-go zone. And then the third thing you have would be channels. So if you have like a front lawn and a back lawn, or if you have a lawn on either side of a driveway or any way it's split up, a channel is going to be the little connecting path that'll go between the two different perimeters, the two different zones that you're able to drive through. Now I used all three with this and it managed all of them very well. Like I was really impressed by how well it actually knows where it is. Now there is a margin of error. You want to be within about six inches or so from the absolute edge. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. This also has three levels of obstacle avoidance. So level zero is like, this just tries to go as close as possible to where it's supposed to mow. If you have something in your lawn, it's going to go really tight around that. The second and third level, of course, goes further and further away from that. Now, looking at the mower itself, a couple other things I want to mention here. This does, this does have lights on it, which does make it really nice when it's lower, like lower light in the evening. Maybe it's close to a sidewalk. You don't, you don't want anyone getting too close to it, obviously. There's a huge stop button on the top, which is great for safety reasons. And there are a couple of other buttons. There's a little home button, a little mow button, and a start button. Those buttons never really did anything for me. I use the app anyway, but like if I press one of them, I don't, I don't actually know what happens. Like if it's not home and I press the home button, it doesn't do anything. So I'm not sure what those, what those do. It also has suspension on all the wheels or on the front two wheels at least. So it kind of does go over your lawn pretty well and it keeps it pretty level even if one wheel goes into a bit of a pothole. But the second question I had was does this ever get stuck? And there's really two ways it could get stuck. Starting off with the actual driving of this, this one I think is so much better than a lot of others out there. The reason that I was particularly interested in the Luba 2, and I know uh, EcoFlow makes one pretty similar as well, is that this has all-wheel drive. So on the back, we have these really nice knobby tires, so it's able to grip a lot and drive up really steep slopes up to 38 degrees. And on the front, we also have motors here to drive in the front as well. And they have these like really interesting wheels that go perpendicular to the axis of the wheel itself. And this allows you to turn. This can turn basically a zero turn 
without dragging the wheels through the grass and really scratching it up. So they roll sideways, they're kind of like an omnidirectional wheel, and I found that it works really well. It almost never scratches up any of my grass, so that's quite impressive. So it doesn't get stuck, ever, when it's driving around terrain, bumps, hills, whatever, mud, this does not get stuck. The only time it does get stuck is when it runs into a wall or it drives over like a stick or something. Uh, those are situations that you can control. So driving into a wall means that you probably mapped it too close to the boundary. I did that when I first got this. The second thing, like I said, if it runs over a stick, one thing you have to note about this is because it's so much smaller than like a zero turn, which has a giant engine and, and can just blow through pine cones and sticks and whatever, this doesn't. So this thing, you want to make sure that you're not, like you really have to go through your lawn every now and then and pick up sticks and anything that this could potentially get stuck on. And a quick little tip, I recommend configuring the settings so that this does the interior before doing the perimeter because the perimeter, in my experience, is the most likely situation where it'll get stuck. But for the most part, it doesn't seem to get stuck all that often. Moving on to number three, what is the cutting quality like with this? This is obviously very different from a traditional push mower or riding mower, and the reason for that is because unlike those which have large spinning blades, so this has just a, a circle, which is going to be much more efficient, and then on the end of that it has little razor blades, and these blades are really floppy, like they can, they, they stick out obviously when it's on, but if it bumps into anything, they'll retract very easily, so you don't smash the entire blade. So it's a lot more efficient, uses clearly much less power, and uh, it should be pretty easy to maintain that as well. The height's also adjustable on this. Uh, there are two models. There's the regular model, which goes from one inch, a pretty low cut, up to 2.7. And then the one that I got is the H model, which is 2.2 up to four inches. So I like a little bit of taller grass. Uh, I'm not trying to get a putting green out there. And so that model makes sense for me. It also has rain sensors on the top. Uh, so if it's wet grass, because it rained that day or the day before, it won't actually go out and mow. So I think that's all really impressive. And the cut itself, it does a really good job of keeping perfectly straight lines. You can choose the spacing of the lines as well by default. I think it looks fantastic and you're able to get the lines in basically any orientation you want. You can have it spiral, you can have it do all straight lines, uh, diagonal, really a lot of configurations. And the cut I think looks quite good. It's very different from a traditional zero turn though because Unlike that, which it would have really large flat blades that makes really like wide sweeping paths, these are much more narrow. And so the terrain of your lawn will kind of reflect a little bit more on the top of the grass. It's not like one flat sheet unless the grass is growing on a really flat, like really flat soil. Moving on to number four, what is the battery like on this? So this has a home base. When you unbox it, it's actually really easy to set up. It's like you just kind of set it on the ground. They have these little plastic screws that go into the soil. Uh, they work quite well, and then you just plug that into a wall. There's a really long cable as well, which I was pleasantly surprised by. And so this will just automatically drive back to its base. It backs onto the base, and it charges with some nodes on the back. Uh, so this thing automatically charges. It should last about three hours per charge is what they claim. Uh, for me, what I think is really interesting is that my lawn is about seven or 8,000 square feet that it's mowing, and it takes it should take six hours to mow. That's what it tells me, but it doesn't actually calculate the time to charge, which is really weird. So the total mowing time ends up being somewhere around 10, between 10 and 12 hours, depending on the day, to mow the entire lawn. So definitely a pretty long time once you factor in those recharges. But the good thing is you obviously don't have to go out and like plug it in whenever the battery dies. It does that itself. This is also a very different method of cutting your grass versus a traditional mower because unlike traditional mowers which mow, maybe you go once a week, maybe you go even every other week, and you could be cutting off one to even two inches of grass, which is going to shock the grass a lot more, which is not good for it. And also it's going to either require raking or you're gonna have a lot of grass that, like large dead blades that are kind of mulching within there, which could inhibit more grass from growing. So this mowing every day or every other day and cutting off about a quarter inch is going to be much healthier for your grass. You're never gonna have grass clippings around. You don't have any visible dead grass and you don't have any raking or anything, any kind of clippings that you have to deal with. Moving on to question number six I had in the beginning, can it mow at night? Honestly, I thought that would be really ideal. If you had a mower that was able to go around at night, you would never have to see it. You'd wake up every day and just have a nice clean lawn. The answer is no with this. It doesn't really work very well at night. Uh, and that's because it uses cameras on the front. So when it's too dark, it can't really navigate. And even though the RTK station and the radar can definitely help it navigate in low light, once it gets dark, I get a notification that says it's too dark and it usually ends up stuck where it is, which is kind of one of my complaints with this, and that's kind of a bug that I think hopefully will be fixed 
there is bad battery management. Like I said before, it never like estimates the charging time at all when you when you start the, the task in the morning. And it also doesn't really manage the battery well. Like it'll be right before sunset and it has maybe 15% of the, the lawn left to mow and it's charging from 80% up to 100. Like it has plenty of battery to just finish the job before it gets dark, but instead it waits until it gets to 100% charge and then it drives out and it dies in the middle of my lawn at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night or whatever sunset is, like nine, eight, nine o'clock. And so then it's, it's like, I have to go out the next morning, it's dead, I have to bring it back. And so that is a little bit of an inconvenience. I think that's gonna be changed with some software hopefully, but tying in with that, an inconvenience with this is it is about 40 pounds. So while it does roll freely and you can kind of push it with your foot to get it back to the home base, if it dies in your lawn, like, like that's a little inconvenient. It's heavy to carry, there are handles on the side, but it's not the most convenient thing to get back to its home base. Question number seven though, how loud is this? Probably my favorite aspect of this entire setup in general is the volume of it. So unlike a large mower, uh, this is basically inaudible unless you're right up next to it. And even then, maybe 55, maybe 60 decibels. Like, like it's really, really quiet. It sounds quieter than like, a, I don't know, electric toothbrush or uh, like basically anything. It's quieter than any household appliance you have. And so this can mow all day and you'll never hear it. Unlike, like I said, if you hire a mowing company or if you're out mowing yourself, it's really loud. Your neighbors hear it, anyone inside hears it. Question number eight I had is how hands off is this really? Like if you're getting this, the idea is that you don't wanna have to go out and do anything. There are a couple aspects of this. One is maintenance. I found that maintenance so far, I've only had it for a month, basically no maintenance. I have not had to replace the blades yet. It does a good job. I haven't had to like really clean any nodes or anything like that. It does a good job. So I'm happy with that. The second thing is supervision. Does it get stuck is kind of the question I had before. And, and, and like I mentioned earlier, it does sometimes get stuck. It'll run into the edge. Uh, and so again, I kind of have to remap and go at least six to eight inches in from the boundaries, which is a little bit inconvenient, which means I do still have some lawn work required. It doesn't go totally to the edges. So you have to go out the weed whacker and do some trimming around the edges of your lawn. Again, saves you a lot of time because that you would have to do that anyway with mowing. And this time you don't have to do the actual mowing. So maybe like 20 minutes a week, not a huge deal. But the other maintenance you have to do or the other supervision I would say or other extra tasks you have to do, like I said mentioned before, is going around and picking up sticks and pine cones. But question number nine, this is a big one that everyone I've shown this to, I swear this is the first thing they say, is can't that just get stolen? And the answer is kind of yes, but like kind of no at the same time. Like this doesn't have GPS tracking. So if somebody just picked this up and ran away with it, yeah, it's gone. Like you can't locate it. There's no way for you to track it down, uh, but it is operationally worthless. Like if anyone takes it, they can't do anything with it. They can't set it up on their account and maybe they could like take it apart and use the motors and sell them separately, but it's not worth nearly as much to someone who steals it. So maybe you could put a sticker on the top that says like, uh, I don't know, kind of mentions that so people don't steal it. Or another option you could do is maybe put an air tag in it. I saw someone on YouTube take off the front bumper, kind of unscrew it and put an air tag in there. Uh, if someone stole it, it would be really hard for them to find that air tag. You'd be able to track it for a pretty good amount of time until they found it. And hopefully you would be able to recover that. But then we get into, if you haven't already left a comment about this, I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of comments about this. The most interesting aspect of this mower, and that is the price. So this thing is $2,800. That's that's no chump change. Like that, that's a lot of money there. But when you think about it like this, most Americans probably spend between two and maybe upwards of like eight hours per week on their lawn. Or if you don't do it yourself, you probably pay between one and $2,000 a year for a professional to mow your lawn. And as someone who previously owned a small lawn care business in college, I was always really fascinated by robot mowers. And I thought that would really be a big impact on the lawn mowing industry because $2,000 a year or even $1,000 a year, this pays for itself fairly quickly. And I think for a lot of people, that could be a real value proposition. Now, of course, I have only had this for four weeks, so I don't know how long this would last. I would love to see it last five, six, seven, eight years, but who knows? It might have some problems after one or two years, like I just don't know yet because I haven't had it that long. But that kind of brings me into some complaints and tips, kind of wrapping up this video, things that I think are incredibly important for you to know if you're either considering buying this or if you already have one. The first thing, like I said, I wish it was easier to move. I think that that's something that Mamotion should really think about, either better battery management 
or make it easier to move back to the start. Like if you're an older, like if it's like my grandma, for example, she's not gonna wanna push that back. Like that's, that's gonna be an inconvenience. The second thing, this is a, a Chinese company and the software is usually good, but sometimes still a little bit buggy and sometimes some weird translations. Like you may have seen uh, my friend Ben from Authentech, he made a video about this a year ago and he pointed out a lot of bad translations that just didn't make sense in the app. The good news is a lot of that has been tremendously improved. I haven't really seen nearly as much, but there are still some bugs. Like for example, the cutting length on here glitches out a lot. I have the four inch model, so this can mow up to four inches, but in the app, many times it only shows me a maximum of 2.8 inches, which I know is not what it actually translates to on this device because it's the taller model. The next drawback is that you do have to keep that boundary edge a little bit in, like I mentioned, from the actual edge of your lawn, about six inches, which is pretty wide. You have to go around with a, a, a weed whacker pretty regularly to get that boundary. The next one is that the RTK station, this is not a drawback, but this is a really strong tip. It's very, very important that you have that in a really good spot and do not move it once you install it because if you move it, you have to remap your entire lawn, which could take an hour or more to do. Also, I recommend alternating the patterns. So like in the app, for example, right here, you're able to do a lot, but you can alternate the pattern. So in this task, which I paused right now, uh, you can tap on like the settings here and you can have a lot of different paths. You can have zigzag path, which it is doing right now. You can have any angle you want. So 90 degrees, 45 degrees. I recommend alternating that. It's good for your grass to not have tire tracks in the same direction all the time. Also, it's going to look nice to have kind of alternating paths every couple days. Um, so for me, it's every other cut. I just do a totally different path, diagonal and perpendicular. And lastly, kind of an awesome feature that you wouldn't expect from this is because it has a camera on here, this is able to work as a, a little mobile security camera. So when you're away from home, you can have this Mo and you can turn it on and uh, just check out what the camera is. So if I just tap on, well, I'm not gonna do it because it's sitting in my studio here, but you can use it and just like see whatever it's seeing on the front, which I think is cool. Not only can it help you figure out where it might be stuck if you're like at the office and you wanna know why it's stuck, but like I said, if you're traveling, you can check it and you'll know what's going on at home. So regardless of the drawbacks with this mower, it does take some patience to set it up and kind of get used to what it's able to do and what it's not able to do. But I really like having this. I, I love having this device. And I think that it's gonna be great for busy people who have some disposable income and are willing to make this investment here because it is obviously expensive. It could also be great for older relatives who may not be as mobile and don't wanna go and mow a steep hill outside their house. It could be great for people who work from home and don't want loud mowers around, maybe busy families, or another idea is people who just travel a lot. Maybe you have this running when you're not home so you don't have HOA coming and knocking on your door and giving you fines because you weren't able to mow for like two or three weeks while you're traveling. But that's my take on robot lawnmowers in the current state that they are, specifically my experience with the Mamotion Luba 2. Again, if you wanted to get this one, I'll have a link down below. I'll probably re be reviewing some more as well, but leave a comment on uh, any other mowers you want me to talk about. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.